Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Grace, the one and only behind Fonts Cordy. You are in my art channel and today we are going to customize the cover of my new sketchbook. If you like what you see or what you hear, please like and subscribe for more. This book is a Sea White of Brighton. It's a 140 GSM, 190 pages. It's made of cartridge paper. The cover is it's hard cover that is made with I don't know paper. It's made so you can customize it. I already finished one like this. Here it is. And with this book I learned some stuff. For example, the spine almost gave up on me. It's filled with tape because it was completely falling apart. And also I don't know how this happened, but the covers unglue themselves from the rest of the book. I mean, I had to glue it back together because the entire cover was falling apart. Honestly, it's not the book's fault. I already say I am kind of rough with my sketchbooks and I'm not planning to change that. So I'm going to take some precautions for this new one. So far, I glue some fabric to the spine of the book, hoping that it will reinforce it. I also glue it on the inside and I reinforce all the corners. So I hope that this will help to keep the book together for a little bit longer. I think I'm going to speed up this part because I don't know how long it would take me to customize it. So I'm going to leave you with a voiceover of me explaining a little bit about my plans for this sketchbook. I do have other sketchbooks in the go, but since I already know how this paper behaves, I'm going to treat this as a little bit of an experiment. I got this sketchbook as a plus when I bought a combo kit box thingy from Scroller Box last year. I got two combos, so I got two sketchbooks, the one I finished and this one. The first one has a little bit of everything there, illustrations, doodles, studies, brain dumps, abstracts, and so on. But with that one, I realized the importance of doing experimentation with your materials without caring for the rules. Through the process of working on the previous book, I think I learned more about myself and my art through the experimental pieces than through years of studies. I think this worked like that for me because, well, here's the thing, I've always been a creative person, art is something I don't think I will be able to live without, and for many years, I was missing the freedom you can achieve with your art practice until that sketchbook. I graduate as an industrial designer, and although I liked my career, and you need certain level of creativity, in the day-to-day -day work, there's not much room to play. Yes, you can experiment with form and color, but everything needs to be within the parameters. The end result must be functional and user-friendly. In the position where I am, and many others are, the final work belongs to the client, even if you don't like how the design looks. Art was and always will be my first love. I love creating, and the way I was able to keep doing art was to integrate it with my design career. And for a while, that worked. But then, I realized, the more I integrate both parts of myself, the more I got inside a cage. And the more I got inside the cage, the more difficult it was to get out. After years of following the rules to the letter, now the art I was making needed to be within the parameters or it was wrong. It needed to have a final goal and also follow the fundamentals of art. It had to have good perspective, good anatomy, good values, the color must match the model, materials must be used by the book. It had to have a purpose, it had to be user friendly, it had to have a reason, otherwise it was not good art. I realized I was getting suffocating by the practice I choose to follow, and I tried to change directions. I tried to make loose watercolors, doing fan arts, which I used to think it was a waste of time. I tried urban sketching and daily sketch challenges, tried different art styles, but still, I was working inside that cage, 
In one way or another, I was following the rules. I got trapped by my own brain, and getting out of there was proven to be really difficult until I started doing what I used to call wasting materials. Using whole sketchbook spread to scribble without any sense, splashing paint with no plan, doing marks with no intention of doing something useful out of it, letting myself go without caring what color was next to the other and what materials I was mixing. It sounds really simple, but for someone who was always playing by the rules, it was really hard at first. There was always that little voice in the back of my head telling me I was wasting time, energy, and materials. And after a few months of this silly practice, I started noticing something with my artwork. Somehow it was transforming from what you're supposed to do to what I love to do. I was finally finding my voice and realized I sound really different from what I was told I should sound. It was fascinating and scary at the same time. Like the first time you go down a tall water slide, that mix of nerves and thrilling sensations in the pit of your stomach. And if you're afraid of heights, like me, you may need to use some courage. But after you land, you can feel the adrenaline rushing through your body and want to go again and again and again. After almost a year of doing this experimental practice, I start to draw and paint every day. And the best part was, it was not a difficult task anymore. Now it's fun, it's liberating, it's the cozy part of the day. And it all started by quote-unquote, wasting materials in silly art experiments. Now, I'm not saying fundamentals are wrong. In fact, I think it's good and a must to learn as far as your art career. However, they should never be a cage or a crutch. Those are just tools, and they must be treated like that. I still do serious sessions of studies. I still practice values, anatomy, and color theory. That's why I have other sketches. I'm still an art student. I'm pretty sure I will be a student my entire life. But I also want to make space to play, to waste materials, and be open to experiment and feel like a child again. And this is what this sketchbook is for. I'm hoping one day being able to merge all the aspects of my practice. But for now, it is what it is. And I'm giving myself the grace to grow at my own pace. If you haven't tried something like that yet, to just waste materials and paint like a child again. I invite you to try and be open to whatever happens. We don't know until we know and the results may surprise you. Okay, here it is finished. I like how it looks. I was not going for a watermelon theme. I was going for a more patchy stuff, something like these guys. But I don't know, when I see this, I saw this sticker, it kind of speak to me, so yeah, I like it. I like how it came out. I cannot wait to start using it. That is all for today. Hope you enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more nonsense, and hit the bell for notifications. Hope you have an amazing week. See you next time. Bye-bye.